back to work. These oblivion gates aren't going to close themselves. Be nice if they would, though. Hey, I remember you. Seem to recall you having a uh, hidden basement down there, too. Torture room, something like that? Come on. Marius Caro, by grace of the Nine, Count Leowin. You are a stranger to me, but well met. Perhaps you would like to do a service for County Leowin. Leowin is beset by enemies. The Empire does nothing to help us. Even before this crisis, I did not have enough men to patrol my borders. Now, Daedra are pouring out of an Oblivion Gate on our very doorstep. No, I don't have any men to spare. Bruma will have to look to its own defense. I'm through talking to you. <laughs> Oh, man. I guess my personality really is, though. You know, we're going to talk to uh, that orc later. I miss her. She's actually really cool. We've been through here a couple times, and each time I'm thinking, you know... What was her name? M Mazoga? I think it was her name. Mazoga the Orc. Anyway, she has her own little story and stuff, and she actually becomes buds with you. But uh, right now, matter at hand is we have Living Gate. Um, actually, my quest marker looks like we have two Oblivion Gates. He wants me to close the one over here to the left, but you know what? I think we're going to close both of these. Although, uh, fighting through hordes and hordes of Daedra endlessly, I mean, that's all great and everything, I guess, but uh tends to get just a bit old. So I think we're going to... Uh, Maybe sneak past a little bit of this stuff in here. I don't want to say once you've seen one Oblivion Gate, you've seen them all, but we've been uh, closing them for a while now. And I'd like to kind of get this done, because we really do need to get some help to Bruma, because uh, that's where the main threat is. I know these things popped up everywhere, but they've just been kind of sitting here. I think they're waiting for the call. And that call's probably gonna come from Bruma. Whatever is gonna wherever it's gonna start, it's gonna start there. Let me heal my horse before I go. Old faithful Shadow Mirror. We've been streaming Skyrim and just got a hold of Shadow Mirror uh, on our stream. Shadow Mirror actually looks a little cooler in Skyrim. Has the big glowing red eyes and all that. Looks like a vampire horse or something. Anybody else guarding this thing? This gate gave itself its own little island, it looks like. Yeah, we've got a, another one just right over there. You can even see it. Yeah, I, I, we're just going to close both of them. But uh, we'll kind of make it quick. I think we killed enough Daedra in the last few videos to, to make our point. Like I say now, it's just a matter of uh, getting all these people to send their help. This actually makes sense, though. I mean, if you had this threatening your city walls, would you send all your soldiers away? That makes no sense. So, I can see why they'd want us to do this. And it's an excuse to get a few extra sigil stones. Although, uh, I actually have what I need. What I really want is uh, some gloves and a helmet. That match the rest of my set of armor, just just because. I found that we can survive a little bit in lava. Makes the going a little bit easier. I'm sure if you stick to land, you gotta go around this long, involved, intricate maze of paths and stuff just to get from point A to point B. Screw that. I'll just go through a little bit of lava burn my feet a little bit and be done with it.
He's not worried about my Anchonac at all. I pissed him off, apparently. I think the order of battle here for the most part is to summon first, let your summon just draw the threat, and then it's almost impossible to pull it off of your summons once they get it. But if you get it first, it seems like it's almost impossible for your summons to pull it off you either. I mean, you gotta get way away and, uh, like in the case of my Atronach here, probably needs to hit um, that enemy four or five times to actually draw their attention. That Skyrim was kind of the same. Definitely use something of a tank system in that. If you're playing on the higher difficulties, considering just about everything can one or two shot you through a good part of a good portion of the game, really. Um, well, I, depending on your equipment and, and how you, you know, I mean, if you go for maximizing all of your stuff, then uh, probably makes the going a little bit easier once you get, you know, into your teens on up. But, um,. I don't know, I tend to like to run with uh, basic gear. I like wearing stuff in Skyrim. And uh, I'd like to try this next time I play Oblivion, too. I planned on streaming this also. Where um, you dress like the people in the game. Like, instead of running around with a full set of Daedric with this, you know, ridiculous-looking sword and so on and so forth, how about running around with in-game items, you know, like, um, you know, normal stuff that you see other people wearing. Like, if you're wearing heavy armor... You know, then run around in some iron or steel plate um, instead of a, you know, big dragon bone sword or something like that. I mean, they have a coolness factor to them, true, but how about instead of that, just a, you know, basic steel battle axe, an iron or a steel greatsword. If you're, if you're going this, like, say, one of the blades or something, you know, just the katana. They had a really good katana in the, uh, in the blades temple thing. It was a two-handed... I think the only two-handed katana in Skyrim. Uh, no, except for the ebony blade, of course, which is also a really cool weapon. But it, uh, what was it called? Dragon's Bane or something? And it was it was really strong, if I remember right. Did a huge amount of ex extra damage to dragons, and then it had a uh, another enchantment on. I think it was lightning or something. Something that basically no dragons are resistant to. It was a it was a nice weapon. Overall, against anything, not just dragons. Yeah, but anyway, I I I kind of like the uh, I just it you know walking through the middle of town in a full set of Daedric armor. I mean, okay, the people aren't going to say anything, but the fact they don't say anything kind of I don't know breaks the immersion a little bit. I guess it's like, hey, I want you to acknowledge me in my full set of demon heavy plate gear, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And instead of that, um, run around. Like one of the rest of the people. They even have vampire clothes in Skyrim. So if you want to roll like that, I mean, you can even do that. Do you stick out? I mean, I guess. But I don't know. There seems like there's enough vampires if you have Dawnguard active that uh, you don't really stick out all that much. There's plenty of other vampires to go around too. So I, I don't know. Just... Well, it looks like that's, uh, that little ramp over there just heads damn near straight to the top, doesn't it? I think I'm going to go that way. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sitting here running around a full set of Daedric here. Contrary to what I'm saying, I, I'd like to try next time to run around in, honestly, just clothing. With, with a dagger. That's it. I don't see people with a dagger and shield, so I won't even use a shield. We'll just run around with just a dagger. And with the proper spells and, and so on and so forth, I think, I think we'll find some survivability. I think you can get away with that. Play Oblivion on max, max difficulty and clothing with the dagger. And if you find a way to make it work, then... Legitimately, especially, then nothing wrong with that. But I think fitting in to the game world, uh, most of the people running around are wearing clothes. Come to think of it, you have the guards in armor and a few random people, like a couple hunters and, um, of course, fighters guild members and stuff like that. But the mages wear clothing. Um, the necromancers wear clothing. You know, the enemies, right? The only one you're really going to find in full Daedric plate is the Daedra. And uh, maybe some random, you know, bandits and mercenaries and stuff. Marauders or whatever. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and exercise our invisibility spell here. And just uh, go ahead and make a beeline straight to the top. Like I say, we could fight all these guys along the way, but I, we've been doing that.
Oh, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> what did that danger say? Must have been the wind <laughs> or something like that. Right? And we're here. We probably have to fight some guys in here to get the sigil stone. Although I could probably run past them and just grab the stone and close this shit on them. Leave them all trapped here. But, uh, I don't know, probably ought to kick somebody's ass, right? Take that. Only downside to using Fluffy, Fluffy the Frost Achernak, is that he gets stuck in doorways. Ring of Steel Skin, I think that is the only way to legitimately get a hold of that enchantment to resist normal weapons. I believe that particular enchantment can make you um, immune to physical damage. And that just seems a bit over the top. Essentially, you get a full armor rating and then wear, I don't know, what is it, a 15% Steel Skin? And then use the Mundane Ring and run as a Breton and... I think you're immune to all damage. Now here, uh, actually, I, I haven't maxed my armor rating, at least not that I know of. I, I don't believe I have. Um, the armor I'm wearing wouldn't be a whole lot different than, say, a set of glass. I think it would be roughly around the same thing. As my skill goes up, but uh, my actual, my heavy armor skill isn't all that high. Considering our level, I think it's still in, like, the 60s? Something? I don't even think it's hit 75 yet, so... Um, oh, nice. I think I needed one of those. That axe weighs a million pounds. I think, can, I think they can keep that. So, um, and there's enough physical damage getting through to where I'm, you know, I'm taking damage. I'm still, I'm still having to hit them more than they hit me, type of thing for the most part. So, um, I like the balance there. And so that's that's one thing that. Mm, I kind of wish wasn't a thing, is absolute immunity to all things. Like, walking through... I, I guess leaving the option for a player to legitimately go in god mode so that they don't have to cheat and stuff is, is one thing. But, um... That's kind of enticing. But, uh, you know, a responsible game player, you know, you, you know... You know what kind of challenge you're looking for. You know, if you can build your character legitimately to... Um deal with the hardest difficulties on any game, you know, legitimately and fairly and stuff. Uh, some things just, I mean, being invincible to everything. I, I don't know. I, I How could I play like that? I'm already immune to magic and I already almost want to go, you know, something to that there. But, um, yeah, I picked one or the other. Like I say, I could go the, the immunity to, to physical stuff and then just worry about magic type of thing. I guess if you really wanted to challenge yourself in this, you would go without any resistances or immunities to anything and just... But I think you'd spend most of the game kiting enemies and letting your summons do basically all the work, you know? Um, it's if everything can one-shot you all the time, regardless of what it does. Basically, if there's an enemy on the battlefield just sitting there, then you die type of thing. That's a hell of a way to get through the game because that then it becomes tedious, it becomes work. It doesn't matter how much skill you have if an enemy's presence kills you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's, there's no not dodging, juking, dodge rolls, showing your, your amazing agility and this and that and everything else as a player. Um, simply by just being there, you're guaranteed to die at all times. Uh, I don't think I'd want to go through a game like that. Even Dark Souls doesn't do it like that. They give you outs. They give you ways to deal with things. And uh, it's not just a matter of equipment and gear. There's uh, certain tools at your disposal in Dark Souls, Dragon's Dogma, games like that, where you have dodge roll and you have certain other things and in, um, invincibility, but it, was, it requires reaction times. You know, something's going to swing. You have to know enemy move sets so that you can avoid their blows. 
you don't have those mechanics in combat like this. Um, that's that's not a thing. There is no dodge roll. There's no evading. Basically, enemies, as long as they're attacking, they have a certain hitbox, and if you're within it, you get hit. And if you don't have the resistances to certain things on this difficulty, then you die. And that's it. You just have to be in the general vicinity, and you die. And that's... I don't know. That's I don't think it's the way I want to play. I think finding the tools the game has to offer to get some resistances is one thing. Being completely immune to everything... Ah, it's too much for me. That, that's no fun. That just doesn't sound fun at all. This, in and of itself, was was really effective. Um, but we 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 went and got all this stuff. We spent the longest in this game without upgrading a lot of things. You know, just ran around with you know basically starting gear and just picked up pieces as we found it. Didn't even bother to enchant it and stuff like that. So. You know, we didn't min-max stuff along the way, but we finally, you know, found certain rings and certain equipment and certain stuff that enhanced our character and, uh, finally got to this point where we can walk through a lot of stuff. And we earned that. I think we earned that, right? So I think we'll set the challenge a little different next time. Like I say, going with clothing, and it's... It, it's it's no rocket science. It's not like, yeah, I'm going to do the super bad stuff. Like I say, you run around in clothing on max difficulty, and that's all you do. Um, you just spend a lot of time dying. You know, there's there's other things to be factored in. The use of potions, the use of enchantments, the use, you know, how you gear your spells and your weapons. And, you know, all the things that we've done up to this point. It won't be a whole lot different, but it's going to be a matter of um, setting aside some slots in our clothing and even rings and stuff for shielding basically to make up for a complete lack of armor and possibly um, using a shield spell a good percentage of the time. Like, if clothes are particular to a mage, then an alteration shield spell, like the Breton, comes with one that gives you a, what is it, a 50%? Uh, I think it's a 50% magic shield, so it gives you 50% resistance to magic and physical. I, I, I think it is. Anyway, I know it's a shielding spell. It's a, what is it called? Dragon skin or whatever. And uh, it lasts for a certain period of time. Well, there's there's alteration spells that are like that. They give you a certain percentage of shielding. And so, having uh, figuring out how much magic you might need. You know, in this case, I think we buffed at least one, one of our pieces of gear with a sigil stone. And we also buffed... Uh, I know I've got an intelligent sigil stone. I don't, I'm not sure if I've used it yet. I, I think I think it may be still sitting in my pocket. I think I'm waiting on a helmet and some, and some gloves. But to figure out how much, you know, you got to figure out how many enchantment slots do you have if you're wearing clothing. Okay, so you'd have to stick with the hood, right? No helmet, obviously. Stick with the hood, or I, I don't think they have any diadems in Oblivion. It'd be nice if they did. That would be great. Um, I like the way those look. Not a big fan of helmets. In fact, I, I use hide helmet options in pretty much any game if it's available. But um, you have the helmet, you have the chest, you have the gloves, you have the greaves, and you have the boots. All right, greaves and boots are two different things. And I know in Skyrim, um, your greaves and chest piece are considered one item. And in this, that's all kind of separate. It gives you an extra piece to enchant, essentially. So if we need to buff our magic, we're going to have to set aside a piece for that. If we want to buff, I, I don't know, intelligence, willpower, maybe. Willpower is a nice one. I like that. Makes your stuff regenerate a little bit faster. Makes a difference over time. Um, that leaves, you know, what, a couple pieces. Then you have you have two rings and an amulet. I believe in Skyrim they reduced that to one ring. I'm pretty sure you can only wear one ring. But in Oblivion, you can wear, you can wear two, which I totally forgot about. And amulet, so you've essentially got eight enchantment slots. Um, if, you have, if you're using a shield, you have nine. A shield kind of counts as an extra piece to, you know, buff yourself with. But uh, I, I won't be running with that, so... Eight slots, and if at least three of them are set aside for shielding, maybe four, that leaves only a couple to do, uh, you know, basic things with, like willpower, um, agility, stuff like that. Let's see if I can swim through this lava before I die. Uh, just barely. Holy crap. Well, I'm glad there was no enemies on this side. Now, see, this is another one of those with tunnels. You get lost in these tunnels. They're, they're good for loot. They have, you know, some stashes in there. And, of course, a million Daedra to hack your way through to find that stuff. But uh, I think I'm going to take the overland route if possible. 
do some of that infamous oblivion cliff cliff climbing <laughs> jump spam cliff climbing oh man this is cruel I could just see the ledge that I need to reach come on man there's got to be a way to catch a foothold right here it's got to be and maybe there actually doesn't have to be oh, oh that rock's not letting me catch it bunch of bridges and stuff those towers are essentially loot spots that's kind of basically their purpose I guess I think that big tower right there in the middle that's the one uh, we're looking to go to I think most of the Daedra here are in those caves for the most part normally you'd see one every couple feet or so up here on the on the pathways but uh yeah, this is de this is designed. It's basically like a maze almost. I think you can get into that one tower right there, down at the bottom of that hill, through one of the caves, and then come out on top. And like I say, there's there's probably different ways you can go. Eventually, open those gates up on that bridge. And I'm not trying to hear all that. I'm trying to bypass all that junk. I've had enough of spending days hacking my way through Daedra and these Oblivion gates. I'm gonna uh. Try to bypass a lot of this nonsense. This is a tricky part, getting around these gates. These are here for a reason. I'm guessing going up into each one of these towers, they'll have a lever at the top. Surely guarded by some random danger or something, but they'd, uh, they'd have a lever up there, and then it'd be a matter of opening probably all of them to... Oh, I guess it just depends on which side you come in. Okay, there's like an option. Then you open that gate and it lets you get here. Well, that's cool. We bypassed all that nonsense. And I'm gonna let these Daedra just have their little old Oblivion Tower. They can, uh, they can keep it. Once I take their Sigil Stone, this shit is closed, and they can spend the rest of eternity standing around here, milling around their little. Uh, I don't know. I wonder if this little pillar of fire in the middle disappears when you, uh, when you close the gate. Oh well, not my problem. Handsome looking fellow there. Okay, we have a ways to go. Some of these these little pathways they just make a just a straight shot for the for the roof, right? Daedra just randomly milling about. These storm acts are cool, man. Look at this big guy. I love when they when they do their like power attacks they gather their rocks in front of them and do like a double fist thing it's man they, they have cool attack animations I 
Alright, here we are. That was quick. Why didn't we do all of them like that? Well, there's something to be said for fighting your way to the top of some of these, but... Yeah, I've, I've had quite enough of that over the last few days, to be honest. Enough is enough. you. You banished me like you yourself were banished, huh? I don't know really it says anything about it. They don't they don't pay me any really serious mind, but I still really think that these guys have something to do with the dwarves. These particular guys here, the Dramora. There's a certain kind of Daedra. These aren't the spider kind, these aren't the Daedras, these aren't clan fears, these aren't Little baby dinosaur looking things, or Atronax, or any of that. These are... These are something different. There's something to these Dramora, and they have something to do with the Dwemer, and I'm... Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Man, this dude highly resistant to something, apparently. Dude, die! Stubborn bitch! These guys are aggressive. Too. Ugh, yeah. Screw you, buddy. All 15 of you that attacked me when I got here. Now, these guys are known to drop some pretty good rings. They really are, normally. That steel skin ring, actually, I mean, that would be considered a really nice item. By most players, I would think. But all these, like, you know, 3% frost shield rings, <laughs> I mean, they're great for money, I guess. Well, I have a lot of sigil stones. I won't have enough gear for all these and go put them somewhere. I've been known to set those out in my house because they look really cool. It's like sitting on a table or, or something like that on a shelf. That's it. Allies for Bruma. That should take care of Leowen. They ought to be thankful we closed two of their gates, not just one. And yeah, they got a two-for-one deal. Wonder why they had two gates here in particular. So, I mean, the one they wanted me to close was actually a little farther away than that first one. So, I mean, they were both threatening the city. And there's Mazoga the York. Yeah, we're, we're going to talk to her here in just a minute, actually. In fact, uh... Okay, wrong time in the morning. I'll oh, talk to the Count here. Get his promise to send some soldiers to Bruma, and then uh, we're going to kind of take uh, something of a break with Mazoga there and hear out her little story. Tidings. So tires. I'm sure you have many pressing affairs. I won't keep you. Well, with the Oblivion Gate near Leowen closed, I suppose the... Immediate threat is lessened. I will do as you ask. Let no one say Leowin did not do its part to uphold the Empire. I have given you the help you asked for. Bruma's fate is out of my hands. He's still snarling at me. This That's really fun. You're good. There we go. Get rid of that attitude there, buddy. All right, when we pick up next time, we'll go talk to Mazoga the Orc and see what's up with her. She's actually really cool. Neat little story there. All right, thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe, you can click that button up top. If you want to catch the rest of this playthrough, you can click that image in the middle. It should send you straight to the playlist. Try to leave uh, something up there for you guys that are on mobile devices and stuff like that. Either way, I appreciate you watching, and I will catch you on the next one. You take care. Bye-bye.